What's up, everyone? All right, so we're gonna do our midday market recap today, but guess what? I have a special guest who's gonna come in here and sit next to me while I'm doing the midday recap, and I'm gonna give him a check for $25,000, and he doesn't know it's coming. It's gonna be pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be talking a little bit about my journey. How I, my journey, right? How I got to where I am today. This was, um, for me, just a combination of being in the right place at the right time, learning a few critical things when I was going through uh, high school and, and early college that allowed me to become a day trader and to open uh, this company, Warrior Trading, and do what I love every single day. You know, ninety percent of people are going to go down life and they're going to follow the rules. They're going to be just you know the nine to five job, everything else, and that was never going to be me. You know, I, it just never was, and so I knew I was going to be on the outskirts, on one side or another. And um, for me, day trading has been just an absolute blessing. I want to be able to help, of course. Uh, more people live life on their own terms. Day trading has given me that ability, and, and I know it can uh, for those of you watching this video who have been kind of thinking about it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description below for you to register for one of my upcoming workshops. It's where I'm going to teach you uh, a few more of the secrets to my success as a trader. All right, we'll talk about some of the highlights today, but if you really want to keep learning, make sure you register for the workshop. All right, so enjoy this recap. This is probably, uh, of, of all of the ones I've done, uh, one of the ones that's uh, moved me the most. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Any questions, any comments, leave them below. And of course, I'll come back through and answer them later. I love seeing your comments, so uh, I will come back and answer them. All right, enjoy. So we're going to do a um, midday market recap here today. We're going to go over, uh, of course, my trades from this morning. I'm finishing the day up uh, $1,912.45, which is uh, another uh, really uh, solid day of trading. I mean, we got a couple of good opportunities. So uh, we'll break down those trades. Um, you'll notice uh, my shadow today. Gavin is gone, uh, but Eric is here. So uh, Eric is hanging out with me today. Um, he actually works um, over at uh, the Dublin School, which is... Um, where I went to high school and uh, he wanted to come down and uh, kind of see what I do every day. Um, for me, and, and this is, you know, we're all on kind of the same journey, this goal of, um, uh, of really living life on our own terms. Now, for me, when I uh, first got into trading, as you guys know, it wasn't to try to make a million dollars. It wasn't to uh, drive a a red Ferrari or fly on private jets or uh, drink champagne every single day. It was so I didn't have to go into a nine to five job. For me, when I was uh, in my uh, 20s, you know, I went, I was going through a lot of anxiety. But even uh, long before that, you know, just to take you guys back, uh, when I grew up in Brattleboro in Vermont, I went to the public school for my first six years up to sixth grade, um, six years of schooling. And that, for me, um, you know, wasn't a good fit. I, I was getting uh, bullied a lot, which you guys, I mean, for someone as handsome as me, you know, I didn't have this beard back then, you know. I, I didn't have this ponytail. I, um, you know, was, uh, was not everything that I am today. And school was really hard for me. And um, my parents made the choice of putting me into uh, a different school for, for middle school. I went to a Montessori school for two years. And then was the quest, th there was a question of what do I do for high school? Do I go back into the public high school um, you know, with all those kids that were bullying me when I was in sixth grade, uh, or do I go somewhere different? And so I ended up going uh, to the Dublin school in Dublin, New Hampshire. And uh, that for me, when I first went there, I just, um, I, I looked at a lot of different private schools. Um, I looked at Deerfield Academy, I looked at Vermont Academy, Putney School, uh, Northfield Mount Hermon, and I ended up uh, choosing the Dublin School uh, because it just for me felt like um, a, a group of students that were very much like me. At that, in those days it was about 100 students total in the whole school from 9th grade to 12th grade. So in my 9th grade class there were about 25 or maybe 30 of us. So it was a small school and we all got a lot of attention. And I spent a lot of my time in um, the computer lab. And I was, you know, getting really into computers. And for me, those four years at Dublin were 
um, so pivotal in me developing my sense of self and recognizing that it's okay not to try to go down the same path as everyone else. And obviously I haven't gone down the same path as everyone else. I, uh, I ended up going to, to college for a couple years. It wasn't a really good fit. Dropped out of college, ended up finishing my degree at a community college and then at the Vermont College um, in Brattleboro. And for me, college just, I didn't get a lot out of it. Uh, in fact, since I graduated college, I have never actually looked for a job where I put my college degree on my resume even though I have that college degree. Um, I think for me, I got everything that most people get out of college uh, from the four years I spent at the Dublin School. So um, when I started getting into day trading, a lot of people were questioning it, both my family, uh, my friends, you know, Ross, you're gonna gamble away, you know, the little bit of money that you have, you shouldn't do it, it's too risky. But I believed I could, every, like every single one of you who are in the chat room, believe you can. I saw other people doing it. I knew that just as quickly as you could lose money, you could also make money if you were on the other side of the trade, and I was inspired. And so I went down that path, and it was two years of trial and error, two years, years of struggling. Uh, but I, I eventually turned the corner. Now, you guys know for me, my whole turning point was discovering every single day there's a stock that moves at least 30%. And even with a small account, if I focused on those stocks, I could make a living. Look at VTVT today, from $3 up to $6 in two hours. It's got uh, 37 million shares of volume. That right there is an opportunity, okay? We see these types of things happen. Uh, well, that's a 200% move, but you know, from what it closed at yesterday, which was two. But um, we see these types of moves happen on, on a weekly basis, really. It's incredible. And so in my, once I was sort of halfway through my first year of trading, I, uh, I, I pulled on some of those skills that I learned at Dublin and started building uh, a website. And that was daytradewarrior.com. And I had learned how to build websites and how to write uh, in HTML. And so I built our first website and I set it up as a WordPress site. And uh, then in 2000, 2012, in 2014, I taught our first day trade course. In 2015, I used everything I'd learned about writing, which I certainly didn't get in my limited college experience, but what I did get at Dublin, to write our book, um, How to Day Trade. It's a bestseller. It, it, it's, you know, it's right behind um, Harry Potter and Fifty Shades of Grey. It's actually, it really sells uh, <laughs> like hotcakes. It's incredible. So, um, you know, when I think about my journey to being um, where I am today, uh, not just that choice to take my own path and become a day trader, I attribute um, a lot of it to um, what I learned at the Dublin School and, and building the skills that I had uh, to use the computer, which I've used to make a ton of money and uh, as a trader, and using it to build this website and this community that's now home to um, um, literally uh, thousands and thousands of, of students. So you guys may not be aspiring to run your own business. You may just be thinking, if I can make my $200 a day as a trader, that's good enough. And, and hey, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, that was, that was my goal when I got started. It just sort of ended up um, organically growing into, into what it is today. Um, and, and I do love um, what I do. So um, what I wanted to do, um, of course, was have Eric here. Um, you were talking about, um, a few minutes ago, you were talking about that, that highway. Do you want to tell me that story again, the, the highway that, that most people go down, but some people are on the outskirts? Sure, absolutely. What, we were, what Ross and I were talking about was how so often what you see, particularly when kids come out of college, is that they are funneled in a certain direction. And what we're also specifically referring to is talking about his sister. She went to college, she did all the right extracurricular activities, she did honors, she did all the things she's supposed to do, graduated from college, got a good job, mm -hmm. and that's the pathway that so many people take. But there are those who live in the periphery. And quite frankly, they are people who look at that mass of people on that main highway and they say, that's not for me. That's not really where I belong. And a lot of these people who you see on the outer edge, 
they aren't in that mainstream, but they're doing extremely well because they have found ways of making it in life that aren't necessarily following the traditional pathway that's prescribed that a lot of people are on. Yeah. And what you typically get when you're on that pathway that is prescribed that most people are on is the usual common and typical results for yourself, for your life, for your income, etc. But if you really want extraordinary results and want to do something different, you've got to get out of that mainstream and get on the periphery to be able to see life a little differently. Yeah. And and it's it at the beginning is scary. And it it was scary for me. And I really um, I look up to my sister, uh, she's my younger sister, but I look up to her in a lot of ways for having the the discipline to go and, and, and go through that proper four-year college experience that I couldn't go through, to do a study abroad in Africa, um, to get a really good job working at a hospital. I mean, I, I couldn't do any of those things that she does. Um, you know, for me, for whatever reason, following that right path, uh, was very difficult. And so when I was learning to trade, I felt like, you know, I'm the, the kid who's, you know, I, I could go either way. I'm either going to be a huge success or a, or a huge failure. And I was, of course, worried I'd be um, a failure, but um, I stuck with it. And so uh, Eric brought this pin, Dublin Endurance. Um, it's one of the, I guess, new mottos of the school. And uh, I, I definitely had that, and every single one of you guys have that. Those of you who are uh, still in the chat room today, those of you who are going to watch this later um, on our YouTube channel and uh, on Facebook, it's having the endurance and having the courage to do something different from what 90% uh, of people are going to do. And for me, I was willing to take a pay cut to live a life on my own terms. How many of you guys right now are willing to take a 20% or even a 50% pay cut to live life on your own terms, to be your own boss, to not have to go in to a nine to five job anymore. Because when you go into that nine to five job, you know, you're helping make that person's dreams come true. And you may still pursue your dreams on the side, but um, not to the same extent. So every single one of you guys in the chat room, you're saying, yeah, 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 um, absolutely. And that's what I did. And my first two years, they were a pay cut. Absolutely, until I got to the other side. So, um, you know, for me, I've thought about this a lot. The, the most, I mean, the most critical skill that I learned, um, both at, at Hilltop, at the Montessori School, um, and then um, really nurtured and, and developed in Dublin, was, um, were those computer skills. If it, if it weren't for those, I probably wouldn't have come back up to Vermont and said, okay, I'm good with a computer, how do I turn this into a career? I, even if I had said, maybe I'll start day trading, I probably wouldn't have been quick with the hotkeys. You know, I, I type faster than, you know, most, um, you know, st uh, airline uh, booking agents. I mean, I'm, I'm lightning on the keyboard. And uh, that for me is, a, is an asset that allows me to um, be a very profitable trader. Literally this morning in the first uh, let's see, let me just scroll up. In the first uh, 40 seconds of trading this morning, I made over $1,000 in less than 40 seconds. And I'll show you the stocks I traded this morning. VTVT was one of them. It was up 48%. NVCN was the other. It's also up now, like 38%. Um, but uh, what I want to do is really encourage uh, students uh, today that are at the Dublin School to focus on those computer skills. Mm -hmm. Because if it... Uh, weren't for those, I wouldn't have been able to build, I wouldn't have been able to afford to have someone, to pay someone to build the Day Trade Warrior website. You know, I built our website myself. Uh, we only had the website done professionally like a year ago. I mean, all the versions leading up to then for six or five years or whatever it was, those were all versions that, that I did. Um, some of you guys are gamers, and you know what? That's okay too because you're good with the hotkeys, you've got good hand eye coordination, uh, but I really want to encourage that. So, uh, what I wanted to do today uh, for Eric is um, give him a check uh, for $25,000, and I want it to go towards the computer lab. Thank you. Yeah. Ross, thank you so much. You're welcome. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. That's something that I know will really help those students. Um, you know, that for me was, um, I mean, I, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be here right now. Uh, I wouldn't be a, um, a self-made millionaire if it weren't for 
uh, you know, those computer skills. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really a big deal for me. I, I didn't have, um, you know, the every advantage that, you know, a kid whose dad works at a hedge fund has or, you know, any of that stuff. Um, I had to really create pretty much all of this myself. And so uh, I hope that um, some other kids will be able to do that as well. So um, when we look at... Um, the stocks today, uh, like I said, up 1900 bucks today, $5,000 yesterday. It's my ninth green day in a row, 179th trading day of the year. And, um, you know, we're just continuing to uh, grind along. I'm, uh, you guys, you may not know this story, but I started uh, with a, a small account uh, January 1st of last year. I started with $583 in my account. And I wanted to uh, prove um, to everyone um, that being a successful trader does not require starting with a lot of money. Even $583 uh, is enough. And as of today, my account is sitting at, let's see, let me just scroll up. Uh, we're sitting at $717,636.27. Wow. I'm about $282,000 away from crossing a million dollars. I hope that'll happen. Um, if not by the end of this year, early next year. So within two, maybe two and a half, three years at most, I'll have $583 and turn it into a million bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all just based on uh, trading the same strategy that I trade every single day. All right, so let's look at, um, I'll put up the, the big screen for you guys to see my uh, trades from this morning. So um, you can see here uh, on my Lightspeed account, uh, $1,912.45. All right, so I traded Three stocks, no huge standout winners, not like I had yesterday, but um, you know, a few, few decent trades. So every single day starts the same way. So, and this is an educational opportunity for Eric. Um, basically, what we're looking for, that discovery that I made in my first two years, was realizing that every single day there's a stock that moves 20 to 30%, every single day. So the goal is to try to find that stock before it makes the big move, to, to understand what creates the likelihood for a stock that's maybe up five or six percent to go up 20 or 30 percent all right so what i realized was that every single stock that makes a 30 40 50 percent move shares the same um the same common um uh, sort of um, characteristics from a technical perspective mm -hmm. the first is uh price they're almost always below ten dollars they're they're it's obviously easier for a $5 stock to go up 30% than for a $50 stock to go up 30%. So price is the first one. The second is float. So what we know is when a company does an initial public offering, an IPO, they sell shares onto the open market. So if they sell 10 million shares onto the open market, from that day forward, you've got a 10 million share level of supply. And so we're always trading out of that same pool of shares and that supply is called the float. So that's our supply side. Now, if you have a stock with a supply level, I'd say of at least um, 15 million shares or under, that's a very low level of supply. Just in comparison, Bank of America has a 10 billion share flow. Mm. So if you only have 15 million shares outstanding, you've got a very small level of supply. Mm -hmm. That's one side of the equation. Mm -hmm. The other side is demand. So demand usually comes in the form of some type of catalyst, some type of news. So in the last few weeks, we've seen um, a lot of stocks moving up on um, uh, sympathy to Canada uh, legalizing cannabis. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, a big catalyst right now in the market. Uh, but we'll see different catalysts at all different times of, of the year. I mean, it can be um, biotech stocks get really hot with some breakthroughs, clinical trials, things like that. So number one, stock has got to be under $10. Number two, uh, the float has to be ideally under like 20 million shares. I mean, you can have one that's 21 million or 25 million, it might be okay, but a lower float. And then the third is um, you wanna see some type of catalyst that is going to be what ignites that stock to move higher. Uh, and, and number four, you need to actually see that the stock is already moving higher, which means it needs to be up at a minimum 5% today. Being up 5% is outside the standard deviation. So here we have this morning uh, at about 9.25, this is our list of all the stocks in the entire US stock market that were up more than 5%. And you can see it's, it's not a very big list. I mean, there's, there's a, a decent number on here. I'm not sure how many, maybe 30 or maybe 40 or 50. Mm -hmm. 
I usually just look at the top 10. Those are the ones that most traders are going to be looking at. And there are uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of traders every single day doing the same thing that I'm doing, looking for these one or two opportunities to make a little bit of money. And we've got about 5,000 uh, here at Warrior Trading. So uh, the leading gapper was MNGA. Now I pulled up this stock, uh, it's up 132%, but I looked at it and I saw that it was below a dollar. It was at uh, about 50 cents. I generally don't like to trade actual penny stocks. So this one for me right away was off my list. Um, there's a number of reasons for that, but um, just in, in short, penny stocks for me are too risky. I don't like to put my money in them, so I don't trade penny stocks. So this one right away is off the list. So we're gonna cross that one off. The next one down is NVCN. All right, so NVCN, second one on the list, gapping up 38%, right? So that's a pretty nice gap. Pre-market high here was about $3, and then it was continuing a little bit more in the pre-market session. My charts are light gray for pre-market, and then they turn black once the bell rings right here. So on this one, um, we, we were watching this because uh, clearly this is a nice gap, 38%. And so from a technical perspective, I was watching this for a move higher. We had a headline, positive 12-week follow-up data from um, the first U.S. patient implanted with I don't know, whatever that is that they make. It's a biotech stock. So I don't really look into the fundamentals. I don't check the earnings of the company specifically. This, the fact that the stock is up 38% tells me that uh, clearly someone who knows more about this already feels confident and has bought it. So I'm basically now thinking that I'm watching it to um, the long side. All right, so on this one, we've got a pre-market high of 317. So the bell rings and I'm watching this uh, for a move higher. I jump in this one um, right around um, 312, 315, and 310. I kind of got funny fills there, getting the last fill on the low side. But as it squeezes up, I'm selling my 9,000 shares, uh, 316, 17, 18, 20. And it ends up hitting a high of uh, 325, and then up here all the way to 335. One of the things that I always say is you don't go broke when you take profits. So. I may, and remember when I do FOMO Fridays with uh, our trading psychologist, uh, Ted, uh, he was talking about how he watched me trade over my shoulder one day and was like, Ross, why are you selling? It's still going up. And I said, hold, hold on, Ted, why don't you leave this to me? We'll talk about the, the therapy <laughs> afterwards. So the reason that I was um, selling is because I always like to sell into strength as the stock is moving higher. Um, it's always easier to get out when it's moving up than to get out when everyone's rushing for the exit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's my approach. Um, sometimes I leave money on the table, but you guys have a choice. You're either going to leave money on the table or um, you're going to give back your profits. It's one or the other. I mean, you just can't have both. So I'd rather leave money on the table and walk away uh, green. That's, I apply that same strategy when I go to Las Vegas. So uh, NVCN there, I'm going to put, this back to a one minute chart. Uh, I don't use 15 second charts during the day. I was just showing someone uh, earlier as an example. So we've got our one minute time frame, our five minute time frame, and our daily. And this is all the same stock that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. These are just different time frames. Uh, each candlestick right here, this is a candlestick, that's um, one period of time. So if this is a one minute chart, that represents one minute. This down here is a, a daily chart, represents one full day, each candlestick. So the next one we'll look at is VTVT. Uh, this is a stock that was very strong yesterday. I got in it at a dollar three, ends up hitting a high of two dollars, and of course I'm thinking, man, I could have done better on it, but you know, I walked away with five thousand dollars on the day, so I was happy with that. Today it's continuing higher. Now the interesting thing on this um, is that when we have second day follow through or continuation it can bring out a lot of emotions from traders who miss the first part of the move. And that's, that is the interesting part about trading is that it's very technical, but the reason that we can't automate what we're doing to computers is because you need to be aware and have a presence of mind of the emotions in the market. Are traders right now experiencing FOMO? Are they um, you know, experiencing fear? Are they being really um, conservative? Are they being really aggressive? Are they chasing stocks higher? As you can see on this one on the move from $3 up to six, they're no doubt uh, chasing stocks higher. Mm -hmm. So I got into this one right out of the gates, uh, $2.99 for the break of three. 
As you can see, it squeezes up to a high of 375. And of course, I'm taking profits on the early side as it's moving up. Uh, I didn't capitalize on it as well as I could have, but you know, another uh, green trade. So that gave me on this stock another like $569. Um, you know, and uh, and you, sh you should have seen me on some of the days where I was really killing it. These are, this is not, for those of you guys who have been trading and watching me for a long time, this is a decent day. This is not like a killing it day. Um, and it's kind of a bummer because this stock made a massive move, but I didn't expect it. Mm. And you never know what a stock is going to do. Mm. So the right thing for me was at a certain point to, to say, you know what, if I buy it up here as it's going higher and higher, I'm really giving into emotion. I'm not following rules. I'm trading mm -hmm. with emotion. And, and that's not how you uh, create success for yourself. So is it squeezed up to 610? Uh, typically, I would be buying into that halt, not this time. And thank goodness I followed my, my instinct on it. So we have this thing in the market called circuit breaker halts. And uh, this happens on uh, the entire market, the entire indices as a whole. If they drop more than a certain amount, they're halted mm -hmm. for a period of time to allow investors to circulate what's the news, what's the reason this is happening, and just sort of catch their bearings. Now, on lower price stocks like uh, VTVT, it usually happens at 10%, uh, 20%, or 40% increments. So if a stock moves in one of those increments, it will get halted for a period of five minutes. Now, what typically happens when stocks get halted is they open higher. Mm -hmm. They usually open higher because the, it creates this imbalance. The stocks are squeezing up, squeezing up, they get halted, and then they usually gap higher. But on this one, it did the opposite. It opened lower, which is very unusual. It probably only happens about 10% of the time. But on this one, what I suspect happened is you have so many investors and traders kind of jumping in with Robin Hood and getting off the, um, you know, off the couch and, and taking these trades that they may not be really seasoned and familiar with what happens when a stock is halted. So all of a sudden they're looking at it and they're like, oh my gosh, the stock is halted. What's happening? What's happening? And they're all pressing the sell button. They're, they're like, I, I, I'm feeling fear. I'm going to alleviate that fear by getting out. They press the sell button. The market accepts it, but it doesn't execute. All right. It'll execute the moment the stock resumes. And so at the moment of resumption, you have an imbalance to the sell side. And then, boom, it opens 50 cents lower. It did end up filling that gap back up to six and then selling off. So uh, it wouldn't have been devastating if you did buy it into the halt. But um, no doubt, not something you really like to see. So... Anyways, that was my trade there on VTVT. Follow the rules on it. And at this point in the day, um, or at the point of finishing that trade, I was now thinking, okay, I'm looking for um, something uh, that's going to maybe have sympathy momentum. So that's what we have a lot. We have sympathy momentum. One stock is strong, and next thing you know, stock two, three, and four are also strong. You know, traders they think, well, if this was strong, that's going to be strong, so they buy it. And they want to make more money, so they buy it with more size. That's more volume. And again, this is where the emotions come into play. After years of trading, what I say is that you want to learn how to capitalize on FOMO without falling victim to it. Mm -hmm. So that's a very difficult thing. You have to be in a just, you have such need to have such strong presence of mind that you're able to say, I'm being more aggressive right now, not because I have FOMO, but because I see FOMO in the market, and I think this is a good time to be more aggressive. And so um, I was looking for the next stock to hit the scanner. I saw, and this, these scans basically are searching the entire market at any given moment. Uh, they're searching right now for a stock moving up that meets my four criteria for being in play. So this helps me in the middle of the day find something that may be uh, an opportunity. Uh, again, this is where those computer skills uh, do come into play. Of course, for students that are in our classes, uh, you guys get the benefit of being able to just, you know, plug this in and start running it right away. But the process of developing these scanners did take a long time. Hmm. So we have a, a, a late morning trade on ORGS. ORGS starts hitting the scanner. Boom, 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 boom. And I pull it up and initially I'm like, I don't know about it. I, I'm not really sure but I'm interested in maybe doing a scalp over the half dollar. So it's squeezing up, squeezing up to 815. It pulls back and it comes up, it taps 850. And I jump in for the break over the half dollar. So I'm in with, um, I got a partial fill of, let's see, um, 2,600 shares. So not a very big position. Um, I had another order I tried to take that didn't get filled, so I canceled it. 
It then pops up to 74, it pulls back for a second, and then it surges up to a high of $9.25. Mm-hmm. So I took my profit on that and made another $564, and that put me up uh, $1,900 on the day. So another green day following the rules. So um, really, for all of you guys that um, are hanging out today, those of you who are watching on Facebook, those of you who are watching on YouTube, I want to reiterate that um, the journey to getting here was not direct. It was not smooth. One of the things I did a lot at Dublin was sailing on Dublin Lake, Mm. um, which was a lot of fun. I, we were, I don't think we were ever like the, the top in our league there for the teams we were competing against, but uh, we had a, a great time. And of course with sailing, you want to get here, you don't go straight, you got to go left and then right and then left and right, and you make your way there. And that was my journey to trading. And it took about two years before I really started to turn a consistent profit. Uh, for you guys, you have such an advantage. Those of you who um, want to take a few minutes to register for one of our workshops, our webinars, I'd love for you to register. Um, they're about an hour and a half, two hours long. Some of them go a little longer, three hours. And during those workshops, I'm going to talk about the three secrets to success. How you, f- how you number one, manage risk. How you, number two, find stocks to trade. And then number three, how you know when to buy them and, and when to sell them. As I walk you guys through these sort of three core lessons, you're gonna realize that the path to success, it may not be overnight, but it's one that now thousands and thousands of students at Warrior Trading have taken before you. And it's one that we've, uh, through all these students going through that path, we've refined it. We wanna make your path of least resistance uh, to be that of success. And we've got our, um, you know, our work cut out for us because nine out of 10 traders in this market will not find success. And so they need every advantage possible. That means learning a strategy that is proven to be profitable. And that's, of course, a strategy that I trade every single day. So um, anyways, uh, that's about it for our midday recap. I'll put a link uh, below on Facebook and YouTube for you guys to register for uh, one of our upcoming workshops. We'd love to see you guys there. And um, and I'll I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the day. And Eric, I hope you learned something about trading. This is great, this is great. And I want to see a picture of the computer lab. And um, yeah, that's, um, I'm really glad to be able to do that. Uh, We are too. You know, it it does help a couple of uh, students, uh, whether it's going into the graphic arts, building websites, Mm -hmm. uh, or or doing something like this. I think it would be uh, really awesome for them. So that's it for me. And um, I will see you guys all first thing tomorrow morning back here in the chat room and hopefully we'll see uh, a couple more stocks on the scanner. The market's definitely picking up. We're in a hot market, so uh, time to put the pedal to the metal and be aggressive. All right, I'll see you guys later. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.